today, let us begin with the tour of the setup of the Austerlitz battlefield. At Austerlitz, fog of war is critical, and most of the forces are best put on reserve cards. You are certainly at liberty to place everything on the map, but there are all the advantages of keeping your intentions hidden. The coalition armies have three reserve cards available. The French have five. Now one of these HQs, boom, 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 is Bagratio's HQ. Hidden with Bagratio are two blocks from the advance guard, which is what Bagratio is in command of, and the Russian Guard Corps, which is with Konstantin. One of these HQs is Konstantin, and it's just a decoy HQ. This is Kalareth's HQ reserve card. One of the white Austrian HQs is Kalareth. All of these blocks are with him. One of the green HQs is Doktorov. Doktorov has all of these blocks with him. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coalition HQs. Three of those eight actually have units with them. The other five are simply decoys. When their blocks are revealed from the reserve cards and placed on the map, then their HQ will be placed with them. Here's the French army. This is Davout's corps, and Davout doesn't come on until turn two. This is Lenay's corps. Lenay is one of the two corps that are on the map to begin with. So here are the two forward French HQs. One is Lenay, the other is Sue. This is Sue's reserve card. The French also have <clears throat> Bonaparte and Bernadotte reserve cards. No one is on Bernadotte's reserve card. Everybody is on Napoleon's reserve card. These four French HQs enter here on the Olmutz Road. Four decoys. They don't know how the French are distributed amongst the two reserve cards. And in fact, instead of bluffing and saying this is all he has, are these two core, this might actually be all he has. When one of these decoy HQs is spotted, you roll a die. Now, Bessier's in charge of the French guard, Murat in charge of the cavalry, and Bernadotte's first corps. Since these, these three are decoys. When they get run into, they'll just disappear. They're just decoys. This is Napoleon. When Napoleon gets spotted, then his reserve card is revealed. Now, since I'm playing double blind solo, it works a little differently. Now, when Napoleon HQ gets revealed, the Astrians will find out if there's nothing there, and this is all Napoleon has, as they were told, or Napoleon was bluffing, and everyone's there. The way that I find fun to play when I'm playing double blind solo is I don't know as a French player whether or not Napoleon is bluffing. When Bonaparte's HQ gets spotted, I roll a die. On a 4, 5, or 6, they're all there. On a 1, 2, or 3, there's no one there. There's only these two. I won't know then till then. So until then, I play blind to what the French might actually have for both sides. So to keep the bluff up, if we were actually playing with two other people, Sue's core is huge. Lenay's corps is not. Historically, Lenay was over here. This could very easily look like Lenay's corps with a couple things on a reserve card. This was where Sue was historically, and this looks like Sue's big corps. So to add to Fog of War, I have switched them around. These are actually all just detachments. Now perhaps the coalition player could have all his units that you don't see here on one of these reserve cards. They could all be with this block. Besides this, and four of these could be detachments, which means there's almost nothing here. So it will be very interesting to see how this all turns out. So I'm gonna pull all these French HQs off the map, put them over here. The coalition HQs will go over here on this side. I'm going to try to remember during this video to refer to the Austrian-Russian coalition as the coalition. Though I suspect if you follow closely from time to time, I'll call them the Austrians or the Russians. If I'm saying that, I really mean the coalition forces. Now the first three turns at Austerlitz are fog, heavy fog. Heavy fog limits visibility to one third of a foot move, which is just what's covered by the gold label here. Until you get closer, you can see no more. Bagratio's advance guard moves out. 
At this point, Lagratios HQ has been spotted. Now as we've seen here, in the event the coalition forces are, are thrown back, there's enough room for them to not run into the rest of the corps behind them. Were I playing against another opponent, gentlemen's rules, I would tell him, this is what I'm intending to do. These units are far back, enough back from point of contact here that they won't be run into by retreating units. Lane is drawn and he moves to position himself to face these attackers. Now at this point I haven't moved the Russian guard yet independent from the reserve card units. Next turn, if I elect to move them, and I'm sure I will, whatever one of these HQs is Constantin's will have to be placed over by these blocks. And the coalition army advances forward. And the rest of the French army moves forward. Combat in the town. A French detachment is met by the lead detachment of Bagratio's corps. And as detachments do, they both melt in the combat. The main Austrian forces occupy the town. And now it's mid-morning. Constantin's guard is drawn. Constantin's HQ is pulled out of its decoy position and placed in command of its troops. Now this is north. This is south. Constantin troops hug the south. Prebyshev's 3rd Corps hugs the north side. Kenmeyer's 1st Austrian Corps. Napoleon's HQ. Sue's HQ. Lagratio's Advance Guard, Marat's Cavalry Corps, Lechtenstein's Corps, Bernadotte's Corps. Okay, there's Linné's Corps placed on the map, and they have a move. He also commands all these detachments. Landgren's 2nd Corps, Davout's 3rd Corps, Colerace, 4th Corps. And now we have late morning, last fog turn. Mira is drawn. Lagratio's Advance Guard, Pebrushev's 3rd Corps, occupies the high ground. Constantin's guard. Constantin moves to issue commands. Sue's corps deploys on the map and then takes up positions. Napoleon moves. Landgren moves to occupy Griskowitz. Davu delays the coalition troops in the fog and then falls back. This exposes Lene, who must deploy. Lene has not been drawn, so he cannot move at this point. Doktorov. Doktorov advances forward. Lechstein's 5th Corps continues its crossways movement. Lene's 5th Corps can now move, and they deploy. And remember, these lakes are frozen. Bernadotte's Corps moves towards the Olmutz Road. Corey's 4th Corps holds its position. One more French Corps moves. Now here's also an interesting thing you can do. Because Napoleon does not have a chit. The SAA's guards have a chit. Napoleon can move when any of the others move. But he has his own reserve card. So all the guys with him move when he moves. And he moves whenever he wants to. Once per turn. When another French HQ is drawn. Kenmeyer's first Austrian Corps holds. And now it's turn four. The fog has lifted. Now at this point, it's interesting to note that decoys can spot, but when they spot, they reveal themselves as a decoy. Think of it like just a small detachment of cavalry. So they're revealed for what they are, but they can see things. Kenmeyer and Lundgren are decoys, but they can both see Napoleon. Lechstein can be observed. Klebschev can be observed. Kohlwraith is behind some hills. We still do not know not know what he has there. But now we must see if all of Napoleon's optional troops are really there. No. Napoleon and his considerable forces are off doing something somewhere else. Now the coalition forces must win. Four turns left in the game. The coalition must destroy five infantry blocks in four turns. All of this contains four infantry blocks. They're going to try to destroy all the infantry blocks here because this is where their best corps are located. They must also destroy one. They just get one infantry block from Sue's corps destroyed. They're doing all right. Let's see how this plays out. We begin with Kohlerate's corps deploying on the map. Lechtenstein's 5th Corps deploys first. 1st Austrian Corps. Magratio's Advance Corps moves. Dr. Ops Russians begin advancing off the Pratzen. And Kolarev's Advance Guard, Devu, falls back. Constantin's Russian Guard. The Russian Guard Grenadiers could not make it to the line, but the Dragoons could. Combat in the early afternoon. Now Lene and Devu moved before their coalition counterparts. So they weren't able to move away when contacted. First, the Guard Dragoon striking a French detachment. The detachment is run down. 
Agratios Austrians hitting Lene's line. Lene has his artillery in front and that will fire first. Lene's grape drove back the French infantry, but then the French dragoons overran them. However, his infantry moved up and the dragoons rode off. And now Bagratio's Russians slam into Lene's line. The Russian light troops are able to hold off Bagratio's advance long enough for the infantry to escape. Remember, the goal is to preserve these infantry blocks. Here we go into the mid-afternoon. Sue's artillery in the monastery fires at the approaching coalition troops. Throwing the coalition artillery to disarray, Davout continues falling back. Magratio's advance guard drives ahead, and his artillery opens up on a detachment on the lake, forcing them back. Lene's 5th Corps. The French Hussars charge into the flank of the coalition dragoons, and its infantry foils the coalition assault. Colwraith must keep his troops strong. He brings forward the bags and deploys them. His artillery rallies, and he advances his troops behind the hill. Constantin's grenadiers press forward, and his artillery loggers trundle forward. Over on the coalition right, Kenmire and Colwraith prepare for the assault, and Dokhtarov's force menaces forward. Combat in the late afternoon. We begin with the cavalry charge against the cavalry flank. And it's a harsh day. Bagratio's cavalry falls back into their own lines. Russian guards slamming into Davout's men. French break up the attack and fall back. And on Camp Stanton's left, the French detachment is wiped out. It's early evening, and so far, the coalition army has not been able to come to grips with any French troops. Davout and Lene are simply falling back. The detachments have been absorbing the brunt of the coalition drive. Davout continues to fall back. His troops break formation and run for the woods. His cavalry covers their retreat. Bagratio's advance guard presses ahead, and his artillery opens up on the few French troops across the lake. Driving them back, the rest of his confused troops stumble forward. Again, Sue's artillery opens up on the coalition artillery, throwing them into confusion. Lene falls back. Constantin's guard cavalry races forward, trying to pick up any Frenchman they can. Dokhtarov's troops race forward, and from Dokhtarov's reserve card, the 2nd and 3rd Corps appear. Lechtenstein's troops attack, and Kenmire's troops attack. As the day dies down in the fading light, combat continues. Davout's dragoons in a tight spot, but they're able to fall back. The Russian Corps slamming into Lene's men, and they ride them down. That's one infantry block. Four more are needed to win. Lechtenstein's assault on Sue's men. The French infantry is run down by the Hussars. And the coalition far right, Kenmire's Drive. Sue's men are forced to fall back into the accelerated cavalry supported assault, but they are still intact. And now there's just enough time for one last effort. Magratio presses on. The Austrian hussars race ahead, but are unable to catch the French. Lenny's troops leisurely slip away. The Russian guard traps Davout's corps in the woods. And at this point, the coalition has won a major victory because that are Davout's bags. They have been contacted by the Grenadiers with a gold sticker. Russian Guards Grenadiers use the charge rule, which means combat begins when they contact, when they move. So right when you thought there is no way the coalition can win this because they cannot de they're not going to destroy enough French troops. The Russian drive into the woods seals the fate. The French army breaks. The coalition has won Austerlitz. And that was a good game. And night descends on Napoleon's hopes. And Austerlitz has been his defining moment once again. But not in a good way. Hey.